everyone. I hope you guys have been having a wonderful weekend. Um, yeah. I'm a bit better now. Thought we'd play some Kadawa for a bit. You know, see how things go. Because I know we got into a very, very rough, very fucking rough uh, area or a spot in the game. <laughs> Um. Hmm? Uh, I just showed up because um, <laughs> I was a bit delayed. Uh, some stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. oh yeah, we're in a way. <laughs> I was actually thinking when the starting soon screen was up, I was like, "Hmm, the fuck? <laughs> Where is he?" <laughs> um, sorry, uh, some friend of mine was like, hey, do you want to, like, do some recording with us for, like, our channel or whatever? We're gonna, like, we're gonna play this one game, we're gonna record it and everything like that, and, um, man, I told him that, like, at some point I might be joining stream and everything, mm -hmm. um, and, well, he wanted to push the recording for just a bit longer, Mm -hmm. And, um, honestly, after that entire exchange, I, um... Uh, oh, your mic. Oh. Yeah. Uh, is it popping or something? No, it just, it sounded like you got very distant from it. Oh, all of a sudden? Yeah. Still happening? No, you're good now. Okay. Oh, thank you for the headband chair. <clears throat> so what was I it uh, no, but just some social stuff that ended up happening in the midst of all that. But I see that you've got some new, re uh, redeems. I literally added that, like, <laughs> five minutes before start. I'm like, ah, fuck it, I said I was gonna do this. Might as well. I swear to god if I see Banui, though. <laughs> ah. Uh, you're, you're saying that Banui wouldn't be appreciated? The only one right now in Chad that would appreciate this is you, Draco, so, like... Yeah, but I'm here, like, watching the stream as it happens so I can do the voice acting. <laughs> That's a you problem, then. Jean Jacket Rin? No, not Jean Jacket Rin. I can get that one, but I really don't want to use that one. Draco needs to speak louder. Do, do you want oh, him to? I still distant? Uh, no. Chair. Because, like, stream might be hearing it differently. Why not? Um. Oh, it could be my, um, OBS. Oh, but then I'd have to do some funky shit with OBS. I don't want to do that. I'll just turn down the audio. Not distant, just quiet. Uh. Uh-oh. Uh, I can just turn my mic sensitivity. Hold on. Hopefully that- hopefully this should work. Jer? Okay. That should be a bit better? It's better. He said it's better. Oh, okay. Nice. No, so, the nostalgia thing is literally just this. Game sound was fine, I know, but I didn't want to do, uh, fancy OBS shit. Not in the mood for that right now. <laughs> Late one afternoon, I get to the bus heading downtown. I try to avoid explaining, uh, to myself exactly why I'm doing this. Oh, right. He fucking breaks a promise. Hello, review! How's it going? How are- oh. Yes, all hail coward. <laughs> um why I'm doing this, and keep thinking about other things for the entire duration of the trip. I'm old enough to remember Jean Jacket Brin. <laughs> I wasn't around when this was happening. Jer, you should... You should do the follow age command. I'm actually curious. It's okay, how are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Just vibing. <laughs> After a five minute walk, I'm standing in front of the gallery. I walk past the door to the atelier, but at the last moment I lose my courage and continue all the way to the next corner, at which point I turn back. 
Will Rin hate me if I go and see her? I wonder what she's like when she's angry. I've never seen her angry. The worst thing would be if I actually ruined something by going to see her. Like she seemed to imply what happened. But there's no way that can be true, can there? It's just one of her quirks. I walk back down the street and end up passing the atelier door for the second time. Review says Hydra going. <laughs> Hello, review. I uh, had a fun day making uh, money doing work for a family friend. Oh, hell yeah. Sign for my trip next Monday, though, until a couple of days before my birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that one would be more accurate. Hello, Amy. How's it going? It broken? Is it broken? No. There it is. Okay, so... Okay, well, you've been following for 10 months. Or at least that one. How is how is the other one not working? What the fuck? Because that one's been at least two years. I love the new mall, by the way. Uh, though it's a good trip down memory lane. <laughs> Again, to old favorites. What the fuck? Weird. Um, it's actually a new redeem. Uh, so if you guys want the old, um, if you guys want this model, it's nostalgia. If you want to the new one, you get the other one. Uh, it is old enough for the times before. Oh, true. Bruh. Is this one also gonna be broken? Oh yeah, no, it's broken. What the fuck? Yeah, chat's not even, like, telling me that it's broken. Oh, yeah, no, no, there it is. Stream elements, why are you like this? Uh, it's not important right now. <laughs> back to the game, please. I have no time. I have to go back and record with, uh, more important YouTubers. <laughs> uh, I'm leaving for Monday next week, and I'm returning on the 23rd of June. Ooh, hell yeah. Mine is broken. I'm new. I- it is broken. I'm like this because, like, yeah. Only this time, as I continue all the way to the gallery, its owners are- st the owner is standing just outside the door watching me. I thought that was you. What are you doing here? I don't really want to explain the circumstances between Rin and me, but... So I get flustered and end up mumbling something unclear. I, uh... She takes stock of me and then sighs deeply, looking wirely amused somehow. I hope she didn't misunderstand. Would you like to come in? Your teacher's visiting. We're discussing Rin's exhibition. Ah... Thanks for the invitation, but I really should... Don't be shy now. Come on in. I follow Say inside, finding out that our art teacher is indeed there. Uh, Nomi is standing at the big desk contemplating what looks like an invitation card. Look at what the cat dragged in. Akai, hello there, my boy. He doesn't seem to be all phased by my appearance. How do you like the invitations? I glance at them quickly. They're kind of fancy, with one of Rin's paintings printed on the front of the cover, sh uh, and shiny gold writing. That's not worrisome! <laughs> look fine to me. Uh... Back to Rin's oh, Magnificent. <laughs> I absolutely love the design, and the embossed gold lettering? Fabulous. Also, I now officially have 10k channel points, hell yeah! April 28th, 2021. Oh shit, that's- yeah, that's- That is a little over two years now, holy shit. I'm at 12k myself on the road to 30k, hell yeah. Good print work, too. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, good print work, too. You have to tell me where you get these done. What does Rin think? I haven't asked. She said she'd be fine with my decision, anyway. Nomiya laughs boisterously, still turning the gold-lettered card in his hand. <laughs> That's my girl. She wants to focus on the essentials only. 
Good for her. I'm in the road for 39k because Miku. Bruh. Uh, then I'm going to say, uh, all right, that, that's fair. <laughs> her work is progressing well too. It seems she found new inspiration. I, I think she's been sort of weird lately. It's like she's wrestling with something with herself, probably, and makes her confused. She said she had a hard time painting the last time I saw her. It seems to be resolved now, however. Y you know, she practically lives up there now, right? Say makes a simple gesture with her hand as if sweeping my question aside. Sure. That's not concerning. Don't you think that's weird? Maybe it is. Still, I think she understands how big an opportunity this is and is going for it. Full throttle. I'm just gonna stockpile channel points till the end of time. No, you're not. Because <laughs> there's gonna be a new outfit thing next month. And automatically into crimes. Is it really that big? Nomi sits down the card and brushes some imaginary dust off his jacket. Well, how should I put this? There are times in everyone's lives where something really big washes over you and changes you forever. Mood. Isn't that called suicidal thoughts? <laughs> Only if they get you in the end. Whoa! <laughs> they can change your life from living to deceased. Or halfway there. You're already over 9,000. Uh, technically, yeah. <laughs> this could be that just that moment for Tezuka. Gee, I hope we're, he's not talking about what we were just talking about. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I think I've had something like that happen to me. I'm referring to the incident brought uh, that brought me to uh, Yamuku. Uh, neither of the two adults comments on that, however. It might well be that everyone Wait, has no. or will. At any rate, surrendering oneself to art is a big decision. A thorny path, too. Quite thorny indeed. Yeah? Yeah? Tezuka has almost everything one needs. But whether she has the will to pull through, that's a different question. I should know that best. I tried going down this path too, but turned away in the end. How long would it take to get 9,000k channel points? Um. Uh, million? No, 9,000. 9,000k? Nine Nine oh, yeah, actually, wait. 9,000. Just, just 9,000 points, Draco. <laughs> I know that's over 1 million. Oh, okay, no, so you actually do mean 9, nine million points. Um, well, at least five years, from what I've gathered, uh, gathered from another streamer who at least has it for one million. So good luck with that. <laughs> I don't understand. Do the gamble. <laughs> have to do gambling in order to get it. Oh yeah, if I do predictions. I don't understand. Uh, let me just check the, uh, guy. Please. Um, oh, it doesn't change. Feel free to just pick whichever. Why did you turn away from being an artist? Is that why you're being so supportive of Rin? I feel like that's why you're being so supportive is what I would say. Just be like, oh, so that's why you're being so supportive. I wouldn't really question why he turned away from being an artist. Shit happens. But I mean, he's saying it's a th okay. Is that why you're being so supportive of Ren? Because you know it's hard. Say answers me instead of the art teacher. I mean, some people also just want to be art teachers to just, you know, spread that. You never know. Why did all my uh, cookies get erased? Did you erase your browser history? <laughs> Was there a reason? Maybe, partially. Does it bother you? 
Well, no, I'm not saying it's bad. It's a bad thing either. I just don't get it. Like the Atelier? It's an amazing place, but it's all been used in who knows how long, and now that Ring came along. 17 years and four months. I raise my eyes to meet Says. A calm, calculating stare, not unlike Rin's own, is fixed upon me. Nomiya's unusual smile, or usual smile, has suddenly died too. Feels like the air pressure in the gallery has suddenly dropped, along with the temperature. This is how long it's been since someone worked there. Oh. I guess there's a story to everything. Say crosses her arms with a quiet sigh and leans against the table. The atelier belonged to my husband. He was an artist, too. He lived up there. Well, we both lived up there for some time after we got married. We actually messed through him, as a matter of fact. That's right. Anyway. We were young and foolish. Or at least I was. We were studying art at the same school. Art history for me and painting for him. And as he said, this was about the same time I met your teacher. Anyway, I fell madly in love with this person, or maybe with his art. He was brilliant. His genius just shone so brightly whenever he put a brush to canvas. Her voice takes on almost a reverent sort of tone as she reminisces about her husband. I look at her hands and notice that she's not wearing a wedding band, and on top of that, she keeps speaking in past tense. Man, almost like that wasn't going to be coming up anytime soon. He really was the kind of artist who would make history books, who would make the history books, one with a direct line to God. What? That's what I thought, anyway. Silly, isn't it? I think we all knew that he was something else back then, even the teachers. No, they didn't do anything, they just disappeared, now everything is in light mode. Oh! Oh, rip. A genius, well, I'd say it consumed him. Everything, absolutely everything, was second to art. Be it social life, getting a job, or even me. It just wasn't as important. It seems that artists can't look at their work uh, as just a job, you know? It's something more fundamental to them. It was hard to live with a person like that. Hard to be married to a person like that. She takes a pause and looks to see if I understood. I guess the point of the story hasn't emerged yet. Though I... that or I missed it. So, how do you cope with it? My question, probably the exact one she was waiting for, draws a dry chuckle out of her. <laughs> However I could. Sometimes it was hard. Sometimes I fooled myself into believing he would change. I pressured my own things, too. Or I pursued my own things, too. So it was easy just to let him be. It's not like you can stop an artist from painting if he wants to paint. Plus, being with an artist is fascinating. I can't say that I hated it. Art schools are full of all sorts of posers and pretentious smucks, but true artists are lovely people in general. I think that's why your teacher has taken a shine to our little kitten. She really has the makings of an artist, and a good one at that. She wants to paint? She must paint. Quite so. She's the best student I've ever had. Cookie monster. Oh, now I eat my cookies, okay. It's just about her finding her own way now. Maybe that's why I wanted to give her the, this chance. If she goes to an art school, it'll be good for her. Artistic expression is about finding one's own place to be your own limits and then working with that to expand them to break them whatever works best but you have to know the limits of what you can do anyway long story short my husband was a person without those kinds of limits and a unique individual but a human being can't endure things like that he he died young after he was gone i couldn't stand the atelier anymore and tried to forget it the kind of thing happens. You could say that his flame was bright, but brief. Her story comes to abrupt end, but it doesn't seem like she's going to get go any further. Nomi and toys with the invitation cards lying on the table, as if doing something just for the sake of doing it. 
but what what if Rin is like your husband too? What if she's a person who has unlimited potential? Say's hand twitches and I see one once more that sad look welling up in her eyes. It's a look she gets when she watches Rin. The look by which she remembers her husband. I doubt it. Say stands up and digs in the pocket of her jacket for a cigarette and lighter. Her hands are shaking. I'm going out for a smoke. Wordlessly, Nomiya and I both decide to follow her after a moment. No worries, dear. I'm going. It's already dark outside. Say is standing with her back uh, to us, taking sharp, occasional drags on her cigarette. Its weak amber glow illuminates her face, framing her sharp jawline. Maybe it's best to call it a night. I can give you a lift back to school if you want, Nakai. You're not going anywhere, Shinji. I need a drink. We're going to that place in the corner. The teacher looks at the old lady, <laughs> bruh, and then shrugs at me apologetically. It's no problem. I'll just catch the bus back. I'm headed upstairs to see if Ren will come back to school with me anyway. I think she's been staying overnight here too often lately. Say locks the front door of the gallery and links arms with the old art teacher. I feel strange looking at them. I wonder what it feels like to have friends who have been with you for decades, for most of your life. I can't imagine it. The two of them start making their way down the street towards the bar on the corner, so I quickly head upstairs to the atelier, ready to get what I originally came here for. Do you think I know why my laptop blue screened earlier when my browser was open? I think Opera cleared my cookies after I detected a crash. Oh. I climb upstairs and enter carefully. The room is dark because of the quickly falling night, but I can see Rin, uh, or rather her silhouette, standing on the floor. So she got her inspiration back, like Say said, and moved from easel to painting on the floor. Before I manage five steps, I stop, frozen in my tracks. The ironic realization that human cognitive ability is commendable echoes through my mind. From a mere movement of her shadow, to it took me a fraction of a second to realize something was awry, processing what I'm seeing, formulate the answer, and blush all that, all the way up to the tips of my ears. Rin is sitting on the floor, with her legs under her. She moves in rhythmical motions back and forth, slowly grinding herself against herself. Her breathing is so heavy, it's almost visible from the dim light. It's heavy panting of one who doesn't have the option of breathing gracefully. Her hips, mere shadows against the dim light shining from above, are swinging circularly over and over again. She hasn't noticed me, so engrossed uh, she is in her activity. Should I double check to make sure NSFW is, uh... Yeah, his... you can check. <laughs> I... I'm just... Okay, it is. Alright. I'm just a little concerned is all. The deadlock solves itself before I get a chance to think what can, uh, what to do next. Something in the atmosphere of the room changes. A little thing, not consistently noticeable, but it changes. Perhaps a timid current from the open door, or a minute change in air pressure. The sound of my breathing, even though I noticed I haven't taken a breath for many, many seconds. The aura of my presence. That something catches her in senses. She stops moving, freezes, and slowly turns to the door. I imagine, not see, the horror on her face, like a fawn's eyes staring at a hunter. I wonder if Ring can see my expression, but at least she doesn't have the strength or the spirit to look straight in my eyes. So she drops her chin against her chest, letting her mess of hair hide her face from me even further. I feel like I should either walk out or walk to her, but I can't do either. I told you to stay away. Her words are defeated, painful, as if she was suffering. Rin doesn't have anything other than her shirt on. 
I can see the last whips of twilight against the pale skin of her thighs and bottom. There is no way I can back off anymore. I lost a chance, so I do the next best thing. I quickly avert my gaze, even though Rin doesn't see what I'm looking at. I'm sorry. I didn't think. It's not like that. Her voice is raspy, shivering from held back tears or something else. She is shaking, looking like she is physically in pain. It's not like that. I, I had no idea what it really means to change, but I know now that you have no idea what I had to do all these things that pass through, and I think I forget. I really don't know. They just build up inside and grow and grow until they flow out like a flow of everything that has ever been wrong. I can't take it. I can't think of the things I want because there's no, only so many things I can think four six seven doesn't matter it's never enough I have to let this out I have to destroy it forget it nothing else ow 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 yeah, like any time one of these like big speech forms comes up, it's always just like, oh, oh fuck. Mm. No, there's a reason why I was like, mm, espresso depresso. Hmm. Hmm. Rin is mumbling her words into the air more than talking to me. It is the rambling, ranting, raving speech of a lunatic, even the steady in tone but taking the form of a never-ending stream of words almost simultaneously spawning from between her lips. It feels like she forgot it's me who is present, or that someone actually is present. Maybe she vaguely recognized what the real, what is real and what is not. Maybe in her mind I'm the voice inside her head. I look down at Rin's sorry figure, cowering on the floor, with only the white shirt of her usual attire on. It neither preserves her modesty that is gone, nor her body warmth that she doesn't seem to care about. She looks more broken than I imagine, a human person being capable of, and the hospital and school have given me more of some real perspective on that. I remember the hazy blue smoke, and myself wondering what Rune would do for the sake of art. The realization that Rin really is always serious hits me with its entire weight. She really and truly would destroy herself if her art required it. I thought she was so silly with her strange ways, talking about personal change as if it was something sudden and concrete, like waking up. Uh, it feels like- it feels to me like it's later in the evening than it is. It's only 9.30 here. I feel like it's midnight. Didn't get much sleep. Ah, no worries. Much love! I think I know what's going to happen, but I don't want it to happen. Ambulance coming to get her in? Bruh. Well, there, uh, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, it could also be the fire- could be a fire truck. Doesn't sound like it. Uh. <laughs> this is her. Lay bare in front of me. In front of my eyes and all possible meanings of the word. Complete isolation here in the top floor of this building, in this room, in her mind. Day after day, working on her paintings with no heed paid to anything else. Breaking herself to reach what <laughs> that which she wishes to reach. This obscene act that she does for reasons I'm not sure she herself understands. Why does she have to do this? I'm trying to connect the pieces, but I don't understand. I feel sad. Scared, excited, disgusted, worried, and a number of emotions I can't remember the name of now. I feel conflicted. I should go. I'm really sorry. It doesn't matter. My voice is dry and quiet, like sandpaper coming out of my throat. I really am sorry. Sorry for seeing this. I don't want to see Rin like this. All I can see is her sadness, her stress, her, and despair. Is this what a limit means? Why? How could Say and Nomia let Ring go this far? Or is it me who is to blame? I almost walk out right there, but at the last moment I turn around. I can't see Cat. Steal myself and walk to Rin. 
to crouch down behind her and lightly touch her forehead. She doesn't resist or react. I can't leave her like this. She's not well. She feels like she has a fever, freezing cold and burning hot at the same time. I wonder if she got sick from staying out all night with me back then. Seems she's prone to getting ill. There's a blanket on the couch, but I wrap my arms around Rin instead of fetching it. She doesn't resist my clumsy hug, only slumps her head lower, and deepening the shadows behind her face from me. What are you doing? No, this iron pitch was wrong for it to be a fire truck, a too low for a cop. That was an ambulance. I don't know, I hear them all the time. I'm also like five blocks from a hospital, so you know. <laughs> Nothing. I'm not embracing her out of love nor out of forgiveness. For I, I, for I in love or is she sorry? I just want to hug her. For a moment, the only sound of the, in the room is her heavy breathing. My body warmth shared between two people is barely enough, but slowly, painfully slowly, it spreads from me to her. The small warmth returning to Rin makes me more conscious of her body against mine. Even in the darkness, I can feel the fleeting scent of Rin's hair, the sweat on her skin, the dry paint stuck to her shirt. I feel the hardness of her bones and the softness of her flesh. Her heart beats echoing mine, out of rhythm, just like always. The hot blood rushing inside of me reminds me of why I said what I said back then. Why I came here after that. Even after that, why I'm here tonight again. Why I'm hugging her now to keep her safe against the cold and sadness. Rin has really grown on me inside my heart, claiming a small part of it as her own, without even particularly trying. Rin. Even if she wanted to push me away, I can't help this feeling. Are you alright, Rin? God. I... I think I broke. I painted. I painted some really good things. Incredible. But it hurts me. I can't handle this. Her voice cuts out as there is no more words for her to say. It's not an angry voice, nor a sad voice. It's a lifeless voice. I pet her head and shoulders, the physical equivalent of saying they're there. It's not like I could reassure her with the sweet nothings that people are supposed to say in this kind of situation. I'm not sure if she would even listen, or be reassured. She didn't react very- she didn't react much to my embrace either, as if she didn't care. Maybe she doesn't. At least she doesn't care if she looks sad or not. There is no facades, no attempts to explain herself, no faux happiness. Rin is honest. So... What is it? You're my friend, right? I'm just gonna say right now, like, um... If there's only text, I'm not reading it. Wait, what do you mean? Don't worry, let's keep going. Right? Will you do me a favor? I'm- no, I'm no, sorry. I'm fine. <laughs> I, I mean, like, if there is no image in the background, right? Oh! Okay. I can't fix this, but I'm not finished yet. I knew something was gonna happen last year, but I didn't want- Yeah, see, that's why I was a little concerned, because I'm like, hmm... We gonna have what I had last time? Where I lose function? And if it happens, well, oh well. Her dry voice is a mere whisper, but the strength, her, her last is in it, delivering her meaning much more clearly than her words. I can feel Rin's heart beating against my chest, like a scared little bird. Her entire body is shivering from her fever, from her fear, from her despair. My brain is fast becoming overloaded with the myriad of thoughts this encounter spawned, but I have to push them all aside. I snuggle my nose against her earlobe, which is soft and cold, and her hair, which smells good and tickles me. Alright, I'll do it. I whisper in her ear reassuringly, trying to make her calm down. It works at least halfway as Ring closes her eyes and leans against me, as if searching 
uh, comfort from my ra my warmth. Meh. <laughs> but this is not something that friends should do. We can't be friends anymore? It's fine. Don't worry about it. Just relax. Even though I said that, I'm on the verge of breaking myself. If I wasn't so nervous, I would laugh at my own nervousness. She wants to be comforted, and I want to comfort her. But in this way, I'm... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, see what I mean? Ah. Yeah, they panned up for a reason. Ah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In before this is like the only line and that's it. Hmm. I move my hand lower, touching the skin of her stomach, caressing Rin with my hand. Her muscles contract timidly, evading my touch, but soon they find their trust in me and relax. <laughs> hey, was this the NSFW section you're talking of? One of two. One of two. <laughs> Shit, I didn't save. Oh no, I could speak best. I, I like how that's the censor. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, we have some gourds. It's a yeah, chinchilla. Right. It's a chinchilla. Oh, whatever. Garu, the head is a nigga first. Bruh. Uh. Ring gasps for breath like she's drowning, returning to reality because she has no other choice. Her entire body is still in, in the throes of the slowly dying moment. Mm -hmm. Pearls of sweat are glistening on her forehead. I am feeling my own heat inside of me, but now the spur of the moment is gone, and I don't know what, uh, what to say to Rin, who is panting, hot and ecstatic in my arms. Her shirt, wet with sweat, is glued to her back, revealing hints of her shoulder blades and waistline. She feels limp, weep, weak, and exhausted. I reach for the blanket and wrap it around her and me. Rin doesn't resist me. She is drained of all strength. I don't know. Nothing, I suppose? You look tired. I am tired. It feels strange. Like I lost something. I mean, something else than my marital pr pr <laughs> purity. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's always a good line. Huh. I mean... I... It, uh, I have for like 10 years in grade school, plus my dad retired from the show. Uh. Ah, okay. Don't say something like that. Neither of those things. I don't want to lose you. Does that mean I'm not going anywhere? I'm afraid that you are. All the time. In that moment, I felt that it was not only Rin who lost something of hers. I felt I was losing a part of myself. Maybe all of me. But if you were to ask what it was that I lost, I didn't say because I'd already forgotten it. I broke another promise by coming out with my honest feelings to Rin. That's two in one day. I just... I hate the distance between you and me. So every time it gets a little bit closer, I become afraid of losing it. That's weird. I guess so. Do you mind if I sleep a little? No, I guess you don't. You like watching, don't you? <laughs> she closes her eyes and swallows a loud gulp, trying to relax herself, fighting against the urge to paint. Yes. Yes, I do. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Rin moves her body in my arms, searching for a comfortable position in our very uncomfortable position. <laughs> she leans against me, closing her eyes and lets one last long breath out before settling into the steady rhythm of sleep. With her last moment of awareness, she whispers something to me, but I can't hear it. Rin drifts deeper into sleep with a deep sigh that releases all remaining tension from her muscles. I try to shift around to place both of us more comfortably. 
It takes a while before... It takes a while because I don't want to wake up Rin, even though she's... She probably wouldn't. But eventually, I find a position I'm somewhat comfortable with. I lean against the soft cushions of the couch and breathe in the cool air of the atelier. Rin's head rests against my chest as if she were listening to my heartbeats. Echoes of her dream ripple in small twitches on her face, like a cat sleeping the mouse hunter's dream. The full moon, shining her pale light upon us from beyond the skylight, reflects from a blank canvas, standing forgotten on this easel. Its witness is glowing against the dark night of the atelier. It's witness, bruh. Is it bad that I have a massive crush on the animated Rin in game and want to be your husband? That's like 90% no. no, of no, the people it's not. here. Yeah, no. exactly. It's not bad. It's called a waifu. You get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Through the grogginess of, the f of a freshly awakened mind, I can observe my surroundings only one thing at a time. The morning light shining from the skylight is bright and sky-colored. It reflects from the, shit, the white walls of the colorful posters and paintings. I hope nobody at school realizes I spent the night here. They didn't find out the last time, so I'm feeling confident about my chances. My neck is stiff and my shoulders are hurting like hell from sleeping in an awkward position like that. I can't even remember when I fell asleep, only the full moon and Rin warm against me. I can't remember her waking up either, leaving my side, however, she has. Rin is standing in the middle of the atelier, looking as if uh, she was lost. She's not looking at anything I can see, not doing anything, just standing there. She managed to dress up a little by herself, a strange thing I thought that the last would, would have been impossible to do without hands. I get up and walk to her, patting her on the shoulder to get her attention. Hey. She flinches at the contact. I've never seen Rin flinch. Rin looks a bit panicky, a bit anxious, a bit defensive. And it's as if she were a completely different person last night. Perhaps she was. My heart drops straight down to my stomach, full of liquid nitrogen. I, I'm sort of sorry. I sorry. It wasn't very tactful of me. You know, last night. But isn't that the sort of thing something you want? Because you like me? So blunt, I'm completely baffled by Rin's approach to this. Well, I like the way they describe things uh, in this VN. It is actually very good. <laughs> Hella good. No, I... Even if it was, I think I prefer I prefer for things to go properly. Rin cocks her head, looking like she has no idea what I'm talking about. She still has this guarded feel about her, but nothing belies any real emotion. So, you don't want to do that sort of thing? I didn't say that. So, you do? I didn't say that either. Listen, it doesn't even matter. I just don't think it was the best thing I could have done in that situation. And I try to apologize. I wonder for whose benefit I'm trying to come clear with these feelings. I don't even know why I'm feeling so terribly guilty. Sorry, Wait. what? You heard drops uh, down to your stomach uh, full of liquid? I heard right nitrogen? Yes! He feeling cold. DDLC didn't describe things so elegantly, Lamel. I don't know what that means either. <laughs> like a cold pit in your stomach? Yeah, like, yeah. it just, you feel suddenly cold, like, a sudden shock. Like, yeah. your stomach just falls out beneath you, kind of idea. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, it just, a feeling of falling. But also, the feeling of just shock and, like, fear in this cold sense washes over you as your, literally as your blood runs cold. I've had that, and then the bad thoughts come in. Those are fun. 
Uh, and yes, DDLC is uh, the only other VN I've read. Um, I've I've read a few. Um, and yeah, so far this one is the best described one. We do have the Blue Skies mod for DDLC. Which the Blue Skies mod for Doki Doki Literature Club is I literally just this one crap. <laughs> yeah, I, I would wholeheartedly uh, recommend it because it feels a lot like this one and it is way more descriptive. Um, just doing Yuri's Road, I'm like, this is how she should have been written. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am going to also say this. I know that Rin's probably going to say something about it, but if you want my suggestion, if you do play Blue Skies, <laughs> Natsuki's Road is honestly the one that a lot of people tend to say that they found was their favorite. Um, and not even the good road. Like, the good ending is okay, but, like, there's a neutral ending for the Natsuki route, and it's... I honestly think, and I said this during beta testing, a lot of people said it, like, post-production, they find that it's better than the actual good ending. Hmm. Okay, I really headed out on good night, much. <laughs> I love to, to the other route as well. Yes, yes, no worries, review. <laughs> Take care, we'll see you around. I want to read Coffee Talk, but I don't have the money. Oh, yeah, I added that to my wish list. Uh, another good, well, Valhalla isn't really. No, it is. But if Valhalla is another great one. Yeah, it's, I was going to say. It's visual that influenced, instead of by dialogue choices, the choice of alcohol you give people. Let's be real. It's, it's pretty good. It's a good switch up. Also super fucking pretty. Did you already read your line? No, I was waiting for the discussion to die down. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe. I don't think it was very, a very good idea either. I'm not the biggest Sundari fan, though. Oh, I think it's a good idea. She's. You'll understand the whole Sundari aspect to her if you play the rose, and she doesn't really drum up too much of the Sundari, like. Uh, What's it called? Like stereotypes. Mm -hmm. They tone it back. It's like you said. We are not like that. We are friends. It was a bad idea. Maybe you should forget about it, and I will too. I'm really good at forgetting about things, so it should be alright with me. I can't do that. Why? Because I like you. That's why. I told you, you shouldn't talk about that. I don't agree. Besides, you brought it up yourself before. I hold my hand up and pitch and pinch the bridge of my nose in frustration. I have no idea how to get Rin to understand. I hate that Ring can't clearly tell what she feels about anything. I hate that she's sending these confusing signals, as if she's expecting me to read her mind. Do you hate me? She actually thinks about this for some time. I don't hate anything. I don't think I'm a hateful person. Then what am I- then what am I to you? Help me understand. I try to sound reasonable as I can, but I don't know if it will help. Rationally thinking, this is the only way to get her to understand my point of view. My problem is, rationality never was a thing for Rin. It doesn't restrict her like it restricts me. It's not her driving force. It doesn't make her behave like a normal person. I can't. The same answer. I feel so powerless, I feel frustrated. Why? I don't think you'd understand. I am not sure if I do. Um, in this, you can say, oh, you actually got um, that one. So you've only got two options for this. Yeah. Very interesting. I had three. Um, well, we we talked about this last time. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter, so you can still pick one. Um, I thought that this was one of the ones where uh, it would change. Um, for the love of God, I need to understand. I need to understand is the is that one? The one yes. to pick? Okay. If you say then explain, congratulations. Fucked. Ah. Ah. But not the good fucked. Got it. No, not like what Rin kinda got last night. I'm gonna just go ahead and say, um... Was it not good? <laughs> no, what, what uh, that scene would have been was, um... He's very dexterous. Oh. Wait. He's good with his hands. Oh, okay, so it's... Eh. I need to understand why. I'm not going to give up, you know. Rin's shoulders slump as she frowns. I know. I do want to be there for you. But I can't do that unless I know how. Just... Let me do this thing the way I want. That's all. Fine. I don't care. You wanted to change. You wanted to destroy yourself. You wanted this exhibition more than anything, right? Yes. Then do it. She doesn't respond or even show acknowledgement of understanding. I'm grinding my teeth together, frustrated beyond anything I thought possible. I want to grab Rin's shoulders and shake her until she comes to her senses. I look at her and in the moment I know with crystal clear certainty that there is nothing I can do for Rin. None of the words I know would reach her. But still. I think that for whatever reason, you think it's important that you go this way all the way to the end, even if it's not healthy for you on many different levels. But I'll have nothing to do with it. I can't accept being treated like this, not understanding the reasons for it. I'm finished here. The full weight of what I said sinks in the silent distance between us. Rin doesn't show any reaction, nor even blinks her eyes. She just stares, as, stares at or through me, quietly. That's fine. Her voice is perfectly calm, emotionless like an announcement that the 7.30 train will <laughs> will be seven minutes late. With those words, Rim, make, make, Rim made her choice, and I made mine. If either of us strictly, secretly want to change our mind, it's too late for that. I take a hard, long look at Rin, hoping that it conveys my feelings. Without knowing whether it does or not, I leave the atelier for the last time feeling empty and anxious, like so many times before. Thanks for headbutting me, cat. No, I did not realize we were that close to the end. Oh. <laughs> On that, or the act, act four. I make it in time for class, though not in time for breakfast. The classroom, <laughs> the classroom is bathing in gentle light in the gentle light of the sun. This means that it is going to be intolerably hot this afternoon. For now, though, it's pleasant. I look at Mis <laughs> Misha and Shizune's animated discussion. Oh my God. About whatever, huh? About whatever, Hanako. Staring out of the classroom window, Muntao stumbling into the classroom, four minutes late, and with no recollection of what he's supposed to be teaching today. I could never imagine dropping out of school just like that, even if it's only for a few weeks. On the other hand, Rin doesn't seem to have a problem with the idea of going through with it. And again, somehow I got caught along in her insane isolation, even if we ended up hurting each other. Or did we? Maybe only I got hurt. Okay, Rin's alive. Hopefully I was wrong. What? <laughs> it 
It takes me until late in the afternoon to realize that today is Monday, and the art club meets today. Oh, you were getting cozy. Okay. Not just that, due to the exams, this will be the last art club meeting before summer vacation. Without Rin, it feels pretty pointless to go there, but I want to talk with the teacher. The meeting itself isn't noteworthy, just as my skills with watercolors are not, no are not worth mentioning. Nomiya tries to encourage and advise me without sounding too condescending, but he's not doing a very good job of it. If nothing else, joining the art club has taught me that I like art. It would be nice if I could actually try and make some art in the art club, though. After the fruits of everyone's labor has been piled in a neat stack on the teacher's desk, he clears his throat to give a little speech. That's it for this trimester, everyone. I thought Rim was going to commit suicide by the end of Act 4. Wrong Rin. <laughs> His voice is pretty loud and way too enthusiastic for it. To be genuine. The next meeting is after summer vacations, on the Monday of the first week and of next term. I hope to see everyone there again. Have a nice vacation. Everyone wishes him a nice vacation back as they file out the door. I stay behind, waiting until the two of us are alone. It's almost dinner time, so I don't have to wait long. Nomiya is looking through the paintings, some of which are actually pretty nice. Rim might outclass everyone else in the art club, but she isn't the only one with talent. Excuse me, teacher. Mm. What is it, Nakai? He raises his eyebrows questionably, smiling widely. It's about Rin. Oh? Is something wrong with Tezuka? No, but... I hesitate for a split second, not certain how to say what I want to say, giving Nomiya enough time to start blabbering by himself. I saw her a few days ago when I was passing by at Say's gallery. Oh my God. She said she'd gotten what she got one or two more paintings done for the exhibition. I was quite pleased. She's a surprisingly hard worker. I always thought she was a bit lazy doing what she wants instead of the assignments. He seems to notice my anxiety and realizes he is, um, digressing, shutting up before finishing the thought. Ah, but you had something to talk about. What is it? I don't know. She feels detached from everything, as if she can't think of anything but the exhibition. Well, isn't that good? She is focused on her painting as she should be. Yeah, but this is different. It's like she's obsessed. I want to see her end. Have you been bothering her? He cuts in before I finish what I meant to say, instantly looking quite irritated. No, I... I don't think so. I'm just concerned because she stopped coming to school completely. She feels strange, too. Stranger than usual, at the very least. Tom Bug, this is much more important for her than some lousy math class or physics or whatever. This is exactly why the school is so flexible, to give every student a chance to fulfill themselves. Tessica is a painter, so she should paint, no? And have an exhibition. That's what artists do. She should be allowed to concentrate on that, not these other frivolous classes. She should be encouraged. If you think about it, it's really quite obvious. His counter-arguments are not very convincing, but I'm having a hard time trying to make any kind of rebuttal. My grudging silence is interrupted or is interpreted as an assent, and Nomiya turns to shuffle the stack of turned-in assignments on his desk like a deck of cards. I have to say, well, we're talking about Tezuka's exhibition. I'm very excited to see how it turns out. She's still so young, yet has such a wonderful skill and style. He's talking to the air to relax the mood, and that got a bit too negative. 
I take it that you will be attending? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Well, we'll meet there next. I take that as my cue to leave, and I do, although I'm not happy about it. My message doesn't, didn't go th uh, get through, to say the least. The day after that, all the missed opportunities and things I should have said come crashing down on me. There's nothing left to do afterwards but brood. Second day, I begin to feel anxious. I start doubting my doubt and I feel, I feel stupid, especially since I, can, I still can't think about anything else other than Rin. Third day, Japanese exam and world history exam. Great. The thing I hate the most about her is that she can make me feel this awful, even though I should be focusing entirely on entirely different stuff right now. Fourth day, math exam. We have a math exam, and goes how it goes, I don't care. Fifth day, Nomiya asks me again if I want to attend the exhibition opening. I can't say no to him, even though I seriously want to. I just don't want to discuss with him anything Rin-related, so it's just better to take the path of least resistance. On the sixth day, the day before the exhibition opening, I find Rin standing in the hallway in front of my room.